Okay, so now we're going to talk about the union and find operations we can do on the union find, or the disjoint set. This is the video where I demystify how those actually work internally. So to create our union find, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct a bijection, or simply a mapping between uh, our objects and the integers in the range 0 inclusive to n non-inclusive, assuming we have n elements. So this step in general is actually not necessary, but it's going to allow us to create an array-based unit find, which is very efficient and also very easy to work with. So if we have some random objects and we want to assign a mapping to them, then we can do so arbitrarily, as long as each element maps to exactly one number. So that is my uh, random bijection. And we want to store these mappings perhaps in a hash table so we can do a lookup on them and determine um, what everything is mapped to. Next, we're going to construct an array. And each index is going to have an associated object. And this is possible through our mapping. So for instance, in the last slide, uh, A was mapped to 5, so slot 5, or index 5, is going to be A's slot. So what you see in this picture is at the top is that array we just created, which contains our mapping. And in the center is just a visual representation of what's going on. The value in the array for each position is currently the index which it is at. This is because originally every node is a root node, meaning it maps to itself. But as we perform the instructions on the left of uh, unifying groups together, or objects together into groups, uh, we're going to find that we're going to change the values in our array to map to other letters. And specifically, the way we're going to do it is for some index i in our array, index i's parent is going to be whatever index is at position i. So for instance, if we want to unify C and K, we look at C and K, and we discover that C has a root node of 4, and K has a root node of 9. So either C is going to become K's parent, or K is going to become C's parent. And I chose that uh, K's parent is going to be C. So now at index 9, which is k's position, I'm going to put a 4, because I know that c is a 4. So next, f and e, we're going to do a similar type of thing, and I'm going to say that f is going to, f's parent is going to be e. So at f's position, which is 1, I'm going to put a 0, because e is 0. Uh, similar thing for a and j. Um, but here's where things get a bit more interesting. So now we want to unify A and B. So if I look, A, A has a 6 in its cell, but 6 is J. So I know that uh, A's root node for group green is J. And B is uh, a single node because it's a self-loop. And in general, I'm going to... Uh, merge smaller components into the larger ones. So now B is going to point to J because uh, the green group's root node was J. So now we want to merge C and D. So I find the root node of D, which is D, and find the root node of C, which is C, and I'm going to merge the smaller component, D, into 
the larger component, which is the orange group. So now D is going to be part of the orange group. Now I want to merge D and I, so a similar thing happens, and uh, I now points to C. Now I want to merge L and F, so F's parent is E, so I'm going to merge uh, L and to be into the red group. Now I want to merge C and A. So this is an interesting example. So I find C's root node, which happens to be C, and I find A's root node, which is J. So now component uh, orange has four elements, but component uh, green only has three. So I'm going to merge the green component into the orange component. So now J is going to point to C. So I want to unify A and B. So I do. So if I go up and follow the parent nodes until I, I reach a root node, um, A's parent is J, J's parent is C. So I know that A belongs to the orange group. And if I do a similar thing with B, I also discover that B's parent is also C, which is the orange group. So I don't need to unify them. They're already unified together. So H and J, uh, G, uh, they currently don't have a group, so I'm going to arbitrarily merge them into a new group. It's going to be the blue group. So H and F. So if I look, H's parent is uh, G, and F's parent is E. Uh, the red component is larger, so I'm going to merge the blue group into it. And now, since uh, G was the root node, I make it point to E, which was also the root node. Now I want to merge uh, H and B. So H's root node is E, if we follow up the chain from H to G to E. And B's root node is C, because we go from B to J to C. So now, since the orange component is larger than the red component, I'm going to point the root of the red component to the root of the orange component, so E now points to C. Okay, and note that in this example, I'm not using a technique called path compression. This is something uh, we're going to look at in the next video, which is an optimization on the union find. To summarize, if we want to find out which component a particular element maps to, what we have to do is find the root of that component uh, by following all the parent nodes until we reach a self-loop or a node whose parent is itself, and that will uniquely determine which component uh, that element belongs to. And to unify uh, two components together, what we do is we find the root nodes of each component, and then if the root nodes are different, because if they're the same, then they belong to the same component already. So if they're different, uh, make one of the root nodes point to the, uh, become the parent of the other root node. So just some remarks about this union find data structure. So in general, we don't really ununion elements. Uh, just because this would be inefficient, as we'd have to update all the children which point to that node, and we don't have access to those. But we could probably, in theory, keep track of that. I just don't see any application currently, but there, there might be. Also, remark that the number of components in uh, our union find is going to be equal to the number of root nodes remaining. Uh, because each root node is responsible for a component. And also remark that the number of root nodes never increases, it always decreases, because all we do is unify components, so components only get bigger and bigger and bigger. So now I want to talk about the complexity of the union find. So I said in the first video that the union find has an amortized time complexity. Um, however, the implementation I just show you does not have an amortized time complexity. Not yet. Not without the path compression, which is something uh, we're going to look at in the next video, which is what makes the union find an absolute 
beast of a data structure. You must watch the next video. Um, but just as an example, if we need to check uh, if H and B belong to the same group or a different group, it's going to take five hops in the worst case, and, well, potentially much more. So H, uh, we find the root node, which is C, and then we go from B, and then find the root node, which is also C. So this takes uh, quite a few hops. So in the next video, I'm going to be covering path compression. Um, so absolutely make sure you watch that video. It's what makes UnionFind so great. And also, if you're interested in some source code for the UnionFind, um, go check out my GitHub repository with all of these data structures I've been covering. So guys, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.